So in the face of COVID-19, your company could ask you to work from home. So in this video, I'm going to share with you some tips for working from home to make sure you're productive and you can still get things done. More when you come back. That's what everybody's talking about. That's taking over the conversation everywhere. And people have become just hysterical. Like, what's wrong with people? I went to the store just to get some, you know, some provisions and stuff for the house. And toilet paper is gone. Now, there are no toilet paper in any of the stores in my neighborhood. Like, what? what? Why? <laughs> you know what I mean? I didn't need it because I normally buy my supplies at Costco. And I have six months supply of toilet paper, paper towels regularly. This is not because of coronavirus. I always go and get them in bulk because I want to keep going, you know, every every uh, couple of weeks or so. So I have like a, my garage. I have a bunch of stuff that's just stored um, in my basement, not garage. And so I didn't need it, but I was just surprised at how people were just like mean to each other about it, like. You're buying all of this and somebody just wants one and you wouldn't even give them one, you know, things like that. I found to be very sad. Um, water is running out. People are rushing to get water and stuff like that. So it's a little bit of a hysteria, but I think we're all going to be fine. I really do think we're going to be fine, but your company might, you know, want to make sure that you're safe. And so they have this, you know, um, not disengagement, but like separation uh, approach. So most companies are now asking people to work from home. So that there's less opportunity to contact someone with the virus or a surface that has the virus. And so you might be asked to work from home as well. And I'm going to share with you some tips on how to be the most productive because you want to be productive while you're at home, right? Um, when you're working from home. Okay. So one of the things I think you should remember um, is that you still are working. You're home, but you're working. Hello. <laughs> it's not a free pass to be home and do whatever you want and then check in once in a while and have a drink with your friends. Well, if you still can have friends over because you're supposed to be isolating yourself. So it's still work and you have to do it. And it's it's important to, to continue working and to be productive um, for the benefit of yourself, your company and everything that you're working on. Okay. So the first thing I would say is that you should have a designated area that is for work. Don't be slouching around on the couch. Don't be laying in your bed with a laptop on your lap. Like it's comfortable. I know you're at home, but it's best to have a designated area that you could work from, right? It doesn't have to be your home office because not everybody has an office space. Like I just renovated this space to make it into my office space. I also have another office space downstairs. But not everybody's going to have that luxury of that space, right? So you just need an area that you can say, I'm working, this is where I'm going to work from. A lot of people just work from their kitchen table. That's fine. Or if, you, if you're if you in your bedroom, you may have this little desk and you want to use that to be a work area. That's fine. But you just have a space where you know when you're in that space, your mind is focused on working. And you have this boundary to say, this is work. The rest of it is home. It's going to be important when I talk to, about, talk to you about my other points. So it's good to have a designated area. Also, it's good because you will let everyone know that you are at work. So everybody in your household needs to know you're, you're there, but you're working. So when they see you in the space that's designated for working, they know, you know, don't disturb because you are actually working. Um, the other thing that I would want to say about working from home is to be available, to be active to be accessible because your boss, your coworkers know you're at home and if they can't reach you, they're going to think that you're not working and you don't want them to think that. So be available, be on the chat, quickly respond to emails, um, even more so than you would normally do because you want to make sure they know you're still working. Um, you know, just participate. If you need to make a phone call, call them. Maybe they'll be appreciative of a call versus an email because you know you're not physically seeing them around. 
So call, you know, sometimes you got to do video conferencing if that's needed. So just be, ju just be in the, the mindset. Stay in the framework of work, even though you're doing it from your home. The other thing too is you could have quick check-ins with your boss. So just call in the morning or send a message in the morning to give them like an update for the day. Hey, I'm going to be working on this, working on that. Um, and at the end of the day, say, hey, I accomplished this. I did this today. I hope that tomorrow we can do this. Just to let them know that you started the day, you're at work because they're not seeing you. And you've ended work because they're not seeing you. I'll talk about being able to separate work from home when I get to that point. But it's good to give that check-in so they know when you start and when you stop. Um, that way, you know, they know that you've accomplished something for the day. You you were at home, but you got things done. Um, still get dressed. I would say it's very important to get dressed as if you're going to work. I mean, you don't have to put on your suit and tie and all that stuff, but, you know, put something on to know that you're, you can be comfortable, but still, you know, properly dressed. Don't be lounging around in your pajamas and, you know, that just helps you, your mind to be in this I'm at home vibe. When you put your clothes on and you go into a designated work area, your brain kind of reacts differently because you know you're in the space for work, right? Um, and that would also help the people in your house to know that you're serious and that you are at work so they don't disturb you as much. Um, so you really have to still get dressed and... I would say start earlier than you would normally start because you're at home, you don't have to drive, you don't have all that traffic to deal with. So you wake up, you get yourself dressed, you go to your area and you start working. So you can start much earlier than you would if you had to go in. Um, if you have small kids, now this is a challenge for parents who have to work from home. And now with the COVID-19 virus, some schools are closed and the kids are home too. So how do you deal with that if you have to work from home? Now, if you have older kids, it's not a problem because they can do whatever. They go watch TV or they play their video games. It's, it's done. If you have younger kids, if you have more than one, um, they might entertain each other. <laughs> Although you might still have to guide them and, you know, watch over them. Um, but the hardest part is when you have a single child like me. I have an only child and keeping her entertained while working is definitely a challenge. It's hard when they don't have anybody else to play with. They want to play with you, but you got to be focused at work. So now what do you do? That's kind of rough. So one thing you can think of is having a work play date, if you know what that means. That means if you know somebody else who has to work at home because of the virus um, and they're healthy, <laughs> then you can organize with them to say, hey, you know, I know you have to work. I have to work. We both have our kids. You know, if the kids get along, then maybe we could have a play date and the kids could go somewhere and play while I work and you work. So how would this really work out would be if, let's say somebody has to make a call at one o'clock, for example, and I don't have to make a call at one o'clock, then I can keep the, I can still be working, go to the play area where the kids are. I could still be working and watching over them to make sure there's no problem and they don't have to dis, you know disturb the person who has to make a call and then when she's done with her call then maybe that's when I gotta do my video call and I gotta be in this designated area and so on and so forth so we could kind of you know ta um, tag each other to see who is almost like on duty to watch the kids while they work I mean it could work I haven't done it yet I'm about to do it next week because my job is gonna have me work from home um, for the next couple of weeks. So I'm going to see how that works. You could also, you know, this is going to be a little expensive, but if you get a sitter, you know, you definitely have to make sure they're healthy. They don't, you don't want to introduce, you know, um, the virus in your house and they're trying to stay away from it. But if you have another choice, maybe you have to do that. Get someone to come and stay with your kids and pay them. Um, so those are the options. It's definitely tougher if you're a single parent or if you are, if you only have one child and the child is young with this work from home situation. If the child has to be at home with you, if you didn't have a child with you, then you're great. You know, you do what you want when you want. So that's a challenge. But think about the work play date and see how that could work out for you. Um, when you're working from home, it's very tempting to just be doing errands, right? Oh, I gotta put the stove on. I'm gonna go wash some clothes over here. Let me go fold some clothes. You know, you're working, but you're doing housework. So you're thinking you're doing, you're doing better because you're doing two things at the same time. 
things like washing is okay i think you put the, the clothes in you close the machine and you can go off to do what you want but be careful of the amount of errands that you're running because that distracts you takes you away from what you're focused on and if somebody needs you then you have to rush you know from one place to the next and so it can be a little bit much I would suggest that you stay away from the errands um, and just focus on what you need to focus on. You're going to start earlier so you can leave earlier and then you can get the rest of the afternoon for yourself. Things like that. So I'd rather you spend the time focusing on getting the job done and then you can use your free time to do other things. Um, talk about free time or you know extra time. Make sure that you have a set start time, your set lunch time, and when you stop because it's very easy not to unplug. For those of us who work very hard and are like workaholics, we end up um, working longer when we work from home. And you end up working without lunch because, oh yeah, I can go get a sandwich or whatever, you know, the kitchen is right there, you know? So, but it's very important to stay healthy and to, to have those designated times so that you don't end up working, working, working and becoming, you know, burned out. For the rest, Rest of people who have no problem stopping work to go eat, well, fine, you don't have a problem. But there's some of us that will just keep working. We just keep working because we're comfortable, we're at home. Um, you know, we don't have to worry about traffic to go home or running to pick up kids or doing stuff like that. So you just keep working and you don't stop. So you know, know when to unplug would be very important as well. Um, another thing I would say is that when you're working from home, it can get very lonely. At least when you're at the office, you have the benefit of seeing your coworkers, your boss, you know, there's chit chat going on, you know, you have meetings where you're seeing people. When you're working from home, you're siloed a lot and you depend on your technology to communicate to people, but there is a lack of human interaction, obviously, with working from home if the people that you need to talk to are not physically there. So you have to do things to kind of keep your morale up and not feel so lonely and isolated and not be like, Kind of depressed by being in this um, environment. A lot of people who work from home permanently, they do miss having the interaction um, that people get at the office. So hopefully that doesn't happen to everybody. Um, but it's good to keep the morale up. And you do that by chatting, like pick up the phone and talking to your coworker as opposed to just only an email. Also keep active in the chats, like sending the messages, you know, joking the way you normally would if you did that sending your memes and, you know, your smileys and stuff like that. So do whatever you can to keep your morale up, keep your vibe up, keep your productivity up as you are working from home um, within the next couple of weeks. If that's as much time as it might take for you to get back to the office. Okay, so I hope this was helpful for someone. Um, stay healthy, people. Um, wishing everybody to be safe and healthy throughout this um, very uncertain time and um, I will see you in the next video. If you like this video, like this content, please go ahead and subscribe, leave a comment below. How are you feeling in the wake of this outbreak? What has changed in your office situation, in your work situation, in your kids situation, school-wise? How has your life changed with this outbreak? Let me know in the comments. I'm interested to find out. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next video. Take care.